What's up guys, welcome back to the show, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are heading down to pick up the E92 M3 from the body shop. So thankfully, they did actually finish the framework and uh, he's saying everything came out perfectly. There's nothing that's off. So literally, it was actually a very simple pull, but to make it aesthetically um, perfect, um, that's where all the money costs because this sent me back $700 and I was like, come on, man, it was just like a small little pull, but no, he actually made it look so perfect that you can't even tell um, anything was there. You had to plot all the little metals and make sure everything looks perfect. So uh, yeah, that is why we had to pay a premium and the car is definitely worth it since it is a clean title. So I was like, you know what? Let's send it. He said the subframe's on there. It's looking perfect. So I knew. let's head down, pick up this E92, bring it home and fully assemble that front end. Guys, car hobbies are not cheap. Also being a perfectionist and a honest person isn't cheap either. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's, I believe in karma, it's definitely worth getting that frame fixed. It just, I didn't think it was gonna be that much money. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but anyways, let's go ahead, get this money to the frame shop, get the car pulled out. So as soon as that tow truck gets here, we can actually get it towed back home. Pulling up guys, the car is actually just chilling here. This is that moment I got the spare key. Let's just take the car and dip. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So we got the keys to the car. We paid the guy. The guy's actually very nice. He actually wants to give me a hundred dollars back, but I was like, you know what? Here's it. you keep the money. The thing is, when you find people that do amazing work, you don't want to be cheap. You want to make sure you keep that business relationship. And I'm super happy he did an absolute amazing job on this car. So future down the road, I want to make sure he puts me on the top of his list. But yes, guys, the car is ready to be fully assembled. We're just waiting on the tow truck. I got delayed two hours. I literally been sitting here running the AC for two hours um, because I could get fast food and eat, but I've been on this diet and I'm trying to keep myself on it. I mean, it's easy just to go get some food right now and at least kill some time eating because that's fun. But at the same time, shouldn't be eating food when you're bored so uh yeah just waiting on the tow truck please god it's been two hours i'm losing my mind okay i lied i lied so uh i've been here for three hours i just got these burgers just got here in and out beautiful beautiful burgers um and unfortunately i just got a call from the triple hx and they'll be here in 20 minutes so it's always a good day though when you got in and out for those of you guys who don't have in and out what are you guys doing you guys need to fight out of california just to try this good stuff like, mm, i love it now We are good to go, guys. Got the car loaded up. We are heading home finally. Such a chill AAA driver. I love this guy. And guys, moments later, we have the E92 M3 back in the garage. It's missing the side skirts. It's missing the belly pans. Um, we got a lot to get done right now. Um, something else I'm also realizing, the check engine light that we got on our trip was because of a air sensor. I kept on thinking it was the intake sensor. It turns out it's this little sensor down here and it's throwing a code. I'm looking at this wire and it looks like it could be damaged up here somewhere. So we're gonna go ahead and follow this wire all the way through, make sure this isn't damaged. And even if this isn't damaged, there's a good possibility that the sensor right down here, let me see if I can, actually it looks like something's going on down here. This actually could be damaged as well because look how much play there is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out that sensor right now and check if there's anything wrong with that sensor. Well, first off guys, this intake sensor should not be inside of the, the frame rail. It's inside the frame rail. I don't know why that is. This is supposed to be plugged into, this is supposed to go into the intake box or I believe even the uh, the, the, the intake duct. So uh, yeah, that's the first problem we see there. Let me go ahead and cut this zip tie and just follow this wiring real quick. Guys, this is super weird. I don't really know where this is supposed to go right now. So I'm not gonna mess with this just yet. Let's just go ahead and assemble as much of the front end as possible so you can figure out where this thing goes exactly.
guys, this one's looking good. So it's already mounted right there. We don't actually have the crash bar mounted just yet, but we also got the sensor right in there. Perfect. This was actually underneath the crash bar, um, which ultimately won't do anything. It's not getting any air. Now it's actually going to be able to get a signal because the air is going right through it. So that should be good. The wires, I checked it. They look pretty good. So um, if we do have another issue, I'll double check the wiring or, or replace the sensor. But that definitely seems like that was definitely the issue because it wasn't getting any airflow regardless. Um, now as for the other side, uh, the other side had a crack in it. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I was thinking about reusing it for a split second, but my ultimate goal is to try to restore everything as, you know, as OEM as possible. So instead of using this one right here, um, we have this guy right over here. The exact same part, I think I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this metal thing. I don't know why mines has this metal thing and this one, well actually, I think it's like blocking half the airflow. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use without that metal thing so we can get maximum airflow. And now we have no cracks. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. Let's go ahead and install this bad boy. Guys, it is really coming together. We got the frame officially fixed. We have the new air duct in there. Everything's lining up really, really, really good. And we also ended up picking up these. Again, I'm all about the details on this M3. It is a clean title. I want everything to be as clean title-ish as possible. And uh, yeah, these are pretty much bumper guards. I've honestly never bought this in any other rebuild in my life, but I figured it's a clean title. Might as well make it feel like it, if you guys know what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. At this point, guys, I think it's just time to throw on the bumper. Guys, I've been sitting here just playing with the gaps for the longest time, and I think that looks pretty good right now. We finally got both grills in there for the first time ever. We have the bottom grill, both air scoops, everything right now that's on the car is permanently here to stay. Those grills are the good grills. That's the lower good grill. That's a good air duct. That's a good air duct. Now, those side markers, I have one good one and one not so good one. We'll definitely have to get one that's paint matched. I know you can actually order the pair paint match because this previous owner did. So I'm gonna go to the exact same website and order a paint match set. I don't even know why I didn't think about it when heading down to SSR Auto Body. I should have brought it with me, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and install them. One of them is going to be kind of scratched up, but the other one's going to be looking really good. Guys, I'm actually low-key kind of upset about that, but it's not the end of the world. We can get a set of these online for, I think, 85 bucks paint match, so it's not a big deal. This one's looking really good, but actually looks like it has a broken clip or something, so I think ordering a pair anyways is gonna be needed. But finally, guys, check that out. It has honestly been a while trying to get this thing together. It was such a minor accident. At least it seemed to be a minor accident, and uh, this was just a long time coming. So happy that the whole front end is finally back together. Now, the sides are still off of the car, the side skirts, because we actually removed all the underbelly pans. And right now, guys, it is 11.30 p.m., but right now, I really wanna knock out every single thing on this car as much as possible. So let's go ahead and get the car jacked up and get those belly pans underneath there, bolt it on, and finally get those side skirts on there. Possibly we do all the wheel guards as well, and the water coolant tank. We'll see how much energy I have. It is 11.30 p.m. Smash that like button to give me some more energy.
just to show you guys the job is done, he used this area right here to pull on it. See, he welded a couple pieces here. He pulled on in here. He got that bolt finally in there. And then he checked everything else and lined up all the bolts to make sure the whole frame is perfectly straight. And thankfully, everything's gravy in the Navy. And look at you what we forgot here. I forgot to connect the uh, headlights. So thank the Lord we're in here. We can easily access that. But yeah, guys, it is finally time to put the full wheel guard in here and finally, finally get this car 100% complete. Guys, I am so satisfied. I got this off of Nick's E93 M3. I decided to buy this off him because I want the little details that my first E92 M3 had never had. So yeah, I'm super happy I got this guy. And I also got these clips to just cover up the screw holes as well. I don't know, I just really wanna perfect every single detail. We got the intake duct in there. We got the side marker. We're obviously gonna replace that. But we got the front wheel guard, the rear wheel guard. We have the water tank in there. Um, the, 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 the windshield washer fluid thingy McBobber. We fixed the air tank temperature sensor issue and then obviously the main point of this video we got the frame fixed we reassembled the whole front end reassembled both sides of the car at this point guys i'm gonna go ahead and clear the codes put in some windshield washer fluids because i also want to see zero lights and zero errors i mean i mean first off i need to wash my hands i'm like absolutely filthy but man oh man guys this is a beaut i need to lower down my voice a little bit because it is 1 a.m and i don't want to get any more reporting up in my neighborhood so uh Now that wraps up the night, guys. Yeah, it's so much went down last night. We reassembled the whole front end. We, we replaced a bunch of cracked components. We assembled both sides of the car. We got the frame done. We fixed the temperature, the, the check engine light basically, the, the water expansion tank situation, and uh, even the lug nut. I don't know if you guys remember, one of the lug nuts was snapped into the hub that we actually purchased. Um, SSR Performance actually removed that without even, like they just noticed it had a, like a broken lug or whatever, and they removed it. So I really appreciate them for that. They really didn't have to, I guess, when they were working on the rod bangs, you noticed that and they just fixed it. So um, we were able to put on the fifth lug nut as well. So the car literally feels so, so, so perfect. Obviously to my standard, it still needs a little bit more work. We're gonna get the car hopefully polished, ceramic, everything, all the good stuff. And then I'm um, probably gonna be doing an engine bay detail and a bunch of other things. If you guys wanna see that, make sure to smash that like button. But yeah, guys, I think we're ready for some mods at this point. So if you guys are excited for that, make sure to smash that like button. But without further ado, guys, that's gonna have to conclude the video. I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.